Okay, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about how to actually set up your experiment to titrate your antacid. So these are all the ingredients you're going to need here. Okay, so you're going to have one of these antacids. Okay, um, it's going to be uh, in the lab somewhere and both of them are going to be there. You're going to start with one then the other one. Uh, you're going to have your HCl. The concentration would be written on the bottle. It might not be this concentration that you see here, but it will be written there and you're going to need that number. So make sure to write it down. And then the NaOH will also be there in this type of bottle and make sure to write that concentration down as well. You're going to have your indicator, which you need to uh, know where the endpoint of the titration is. And you're going to have a mortar and pestle combination which you're going to need to crush the antacid tablet so that it becomes a fine powder before you start doing the experiment. It's a quick uh, showing of how fine the powder of the antacid should be so when you get the tablet you have to crush it with this mortar and pestle. It might have already been done for you by another student in which case you just need to get that powder but if it hasn't then you're going to have to crush it to this fine powder. And you're going to need to weigh about 0.3 to 0.35 grams of that powder and transfer it into your Erlenmeyer flask. Okay? And then what you're going to do is once you have it in the Erlenmeyer flask, you're going to add HCl to the antacid powder in the flask using a burette. Now very important, when you're using a burette, remember that at the beginning the burette has to be completely flushed out of any air bubbles. A lot of times you might have air bubbles in the tip of the burette and to flush it out you just need to open the burette once you fill it up with HCl and make sure that that air bubble goes out before you start uh, taking out some HCl to add into the antacid. Once you add the HCl to the antacid uh, what you want to do is heat that mixture until it boils. There's a couple of reasons to do this. One is you want to make sure that your antacid actually dissolves, completely dissolves and boiling helps with that. And secondly you remember that I talked about in the previous video that the uh, antacid might contain carbonate. The carbonate might react with the acid to produce carbonic acid which actually breaks down to CO2 and we want that CO2 to be completely evaporated off or boiled off uh, and that's the reason for heating as well. Okay, So once you uh, heat and it boils then you want to stop the heating and you want to let it cool down to touch. That means that if you can touch the bottom of the flask uh, with your hands that means it's ready to go to the next step. Now what is the next step? The next step is to add your indicator which is going to be bromophenol blue to the antacid HCl mixture. Now here's a list of indicators. Bromophenol blue is circle right here. As you can see for any indicator they basically have different colors for when things are considered acidic and things are considered basic by the indicator. So if you look here with bromophenol blue, there's basically two colors that are distinct. There's the uh, violet or purplish color for basic environment and then there are the yellowish color for the acidic environment. And when you're right at the equivalence point, when things are changing at the end point, the colors is the mixture of the yellow and the purple which is slightly greenish. Okay, so when you start adding uh, the bromophenol blue at the beginning to the solution where it contains excess acid, you expect to see a yellow color and then later on when you titrate uh, to the equivalence point, uh, the end point of that color should be either green or purple. We talk about the titration and how to identify end point uh, specifically. Here we're not using bromophenol blue but another indicator called phenolphthalein. But the idea is the same. So in this case phenolphthalein has a uh, colorless appearance when it's in the acidic environment and when in the basic environment it has a dark pink appearance. So the in-between color of these two when you mix colorless and dark pink you're going to get light pink. So that's the color that you want to shoot for for the equivalence point. Now for the bromophenol blue remember that we had yellow for acidic, purple for basic so then we're going to try to shoot for that greenish color which is going to be the color of the equivalence point. So you can see that sometimes it just takes one drop before you get to that uh, light pink in this case or the greenish color that you're going to shoot for for your own titration. Now one thing that is very important while you're titrating is you want to make sure that as you're titrating that this flask is being swirled. Okay, So you're continuously mixing the solution that are in here. You don't want to just add the acid and let it just stay at the top of the solution while the bottom of the solution is not mixing with the acid. So you want to shake this and swirl it. 
swirl the flask continuously as the acid is being added. That's the way to make sure that the reaction is happening. Remember what I said earlier, you want to titrate with your NaOH until you reach the end point, which means that greenish color, right? That's what we're shooting for for the bromophenol blue indicator. Now, because the concentration of the HCl and the NaOH that we use in this case are fairly similar, one other way in order to confirm that you are at the end point is to add one more drop of HCl once you think that you reach the end point, okay? Because when you reach the end point, you should get that greenish or maybe it's a light purple color. And then if you add that one drop of HCl, if you're really at the end point, that should switch you back to the acidic environment, which means you're going to see yellow again. Uh, so that would be one way to tell that you're at the end point. Now, if you add way too much NaOH, you're going to get a very purple color, and that's okay. You can always do something called back titration, which is basically to add more HCl to neutralize whatever excess NaOH you've added to bring it back to the end point. Okay, but the only thing you have to be careful about is you have to keep track of how much HCl you actually add uh, so that you can subtract that from the total NaOH. Okay, the last information I want to give you in this video, which is actually quite important, is the cost information. So remember that you have to add at the end of this lab calculate how much does it cost you to buy some amount of active ingredient from each of these brands. So this is the information for Tom's. You gotta make sure you write this down somewhere. And this is the information for the Rolates and write this down somewhere as well. I'll take a picture of it so then you can use it later on to do your calculations.